Hey guys, Alex with Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, I'm going to be discussing the argument behind stock placement and why I think it is such a dumb, useless argument to really be had. This video was about 30 minutes of me ranting. Um, I'm scrapping all that content and I'm instead putting it in this short five minute segment instead because the point of this channel is for you guys to take this information and create your own decisions. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to hold a gun. I'm not going to teach you CQB. Instead, I'm going to tell you that I valiantly disagree with this stock placement zeitgeist that many elitists have or perpetuating the idea that uh, stock placement is a science and needs to um, be adhered to at all times with very specific rules and conditions. Um, with all that being said, like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, quarrels, or ideas. And let's get right into the video. So, we're going to make this not 30 minutes today. MCX. This is a AR-15 pattern rifle. Now, in some of my videos, you will actually notice that when I am uh, doing small or uh, smaller courses of fire that aren't requiring... Uh, 60 rounds, the burn down range really quickly, and I don't really care too much about recoil control, whatever have you, you'll notice that my stock placement is suboptimal. And I want to talk about that. Um, the inception of this video was um, T-Rex Arms and GBBRS group and all these groups just saying that you have to have your stock a certain way. And if you don't have the stock a certain way, then you're wrong. And I really disagree with that. I think stock placement is very fluid. It's variable. It's viable in its variability. Um, there's no science that says uh, that your firearm won't fire if your stock is up here. It's just not going to fire as as effectively or the recoil control is not going to be as effective as if it is say 100 percent encapsulated by that fat bone and muscle inside of my shoulder so that is where that video originally went to it was 30 minutes about me ranting about that instead i'm simply going to express the fact that small minds small minds take ideas from youtubers such as myself um, but take a more popular one they take ideas and they become absolute, okay? They take someone's idea from T-Rex arms and they say, this is the only way I'm able to mount a stock. And if I do it any other way, then I'm going to die. God is going to smite me down. Um, even smaller minds uh, look at the uh, GBBRS group video where they are um, doing CQB. And they talk about the only viable one-man CQB being this method which has its merits, let's be real, it puts your weapon into a fire position that can easily be transitioned up to your shoulder very quickly. But those are what small minds do. Small minds take that as gospel without putting in their own thought. On this channel, um, I don't really care about the zeitgeist that the firearms community has regarding many topics, and I get to pave my own opinions and ideas as a pretty decent shooter. Um, I'm here to tell you that... Um, I, I think that's all bullshit. Um, large minds, or scholars, if you will, they're instead going to take information from a channel like mine, a channel like T-Rex Arms, Garantham, fucking Demolition Ranch, I don't give a shit. Anyone that provides an opinion, and they are going to take that information, uh, try it on their own, right? Someone says this is the best stock placement on the world, they're going to go to the range, and they're instead going to crush some bill drills and see if it's as effective, or see if it's faster, or see if the recoil is good enough, or see if it fucking irritates your shoulder after a, a short prolonged, or a prolonged amount of time. It could be anything. They're going to take that information, they're going to crunch their own numbers, and they're going to generate their own opinion based off of all relevant details, and they're going to share that opinion online to then be ridiculed by subreddits that only listen to one specific source. Okay, so... Now that I've got that tangent out of the way, I instead want to talk about um, a couple different stock placements as quickly and briefly as I can, trying to live up to the channel name. So, a couple different stock placements. The T-Rex Arms one. This is the one that he made a video on. We're talking C-clamp on the left, and we are talking your stock completely covered by the fat muscle and tissue inside of my shoulder pocket. Um, it's incredibly useful. It is a, as well as your feet need to be bladed. You guys can't see my feet, but my feet are bladed. It's like I'm about to throw a pitch. 
Um, it's incredibly useful. It, uh, it gets the job done. However, you will quickly notice that it is likely not the fastest on target as well um, as it can be extremely taxing on your arms if you are doing this for a prolonged amount of time. It is definitely not a natural shooting position, which is a really stupid word that gets thrown around nowadays. I think the word natural, um, there's nothing natural about firing a gun. Our bodies weren't designed to fire weapons. However, if we can have a more stand, stood up posture uh, while relaxing our muscles and still having competent accuracy, um, bill drills, whatever, um, I think there is a in, inherent benefit there. So, um, it's a great stance, but instead I want to talk about uh, heads up shooting, right? Like I just mentioned a second ago, not every time you get into a firefight or you're doing a drill or you are even practicing stance, let's be real, we're all civilians, we're probably not getting into firefights anytime soon. Um, your stance is not always going to be perfect. The second stock placement to talk about is going to be what is commonly referred to nowadays as a relaxed shooting posture or a more, more heads up shooting position. With the prolification of extremely tall mounts like this 2.26 unity mount, you will notice uh, our giraffe neck brethren um, instead adopting a much more upright shooting position. Now the innate benefit or the immediate benefit of this is overall the relaxation I guess, um, when you are mounting said firearm. It's extremely comfortable to not be doing this and instead be bringing your weapon up to your eye, keeping your head very straight up, puffing that chest out. And while you may have a small decrease in potential recoil control, you are of course benefiting from uh, not having years of potential spine and back issues, um, as well as uh, arguably better situational awareness instead of being incredibly hyper fixated looking down the side of my EOTech, I instead maintain a little bit more awareness of my surroundings, as well as um, there's obvious benefits with night vision use when it comes to this stance as well. So those are arguably two of the most um, prolific stances that you see nowadays. And um, the next topic of discussion is going to be the use of body armor. So this is also a conversation that doesn't really happen very much for whatever reason. And during said, like T-Rex Arms video, um, it was basically said that you have to shoot a certain way to get proper recoil control. If you're doing it another way, you're doing it wrong. Same thing with GBRS group. They make incredibly bold claims that if you're doing something in, uh, not their way, then you're doing it innately wrong. Um, body armor completely changes the dynamic. Um, when I shoot with body armor, I, instead of focusing on getting this 100% in my shoulder, I instead focusing, or I'm instead focusing on simply getting the weapons platform to my eye. The addition of plates in and around my chest um, does a lot of really weird things when you are trying to obtain that sight picture. And I'm going to throw them in that body armor right now to show you guys what I'm talking about. Welcome back, guys. All right, so. Cry SPC fully loaded. I got side plates level. Well, level doesn't matter, but level four, level four, level four, level four, ballistic helmet. Everything goes kind of out the window when you move from a practical civilian clothing situation, t-shirt, flannel, sweatshirt, whatever have you, and you transition into body armor. Um, body armor makes everything harder. Body armor is kind of like night vision. The second you put on body armor, it's it's the same thing as what you do as a human being every day, but everything's about three times harder. Just moving or getting a sight picture on my MCX becomes a innately harder activity. So that's where this conversation is going to go now. Um, remember when I told you guys that you're only able to do uh, that one method of CQB, or you're only able to do that one method of shooting your rifle that T-Rex Arms shows you in his video. Well, I'm about to show you why I think that's fucking crazy. So, first of all, I'm going to buckle this up because that becomes relevant. Um, the optic choice of your rifle significantly changes the stance you are able to take. Now, I used to have an ACOG on this rifle. One reason I got rid of an ACOG is because, first of all, this is more of a CQB type setup, but if you were trying to mount an ACOG, 
um, you will immediately notice that it is incredibly difficult to hunch over and get your eye close enough to said ACOG with these straps right here. This um, body armor shoulder strap right here, as well as getting into prone with a ballistic helmet fucking sucks. <laughs> For those of you that were actually in the military, I don't know how you guys got sight pictures through ACOGs or the ballistic helmet. Um, that shit must have caused you so much neck pain. But anyway, um, if we take a look at Lucas's teachings first. Um, let's say we have our weapon in a high ready. Uh, bring out our weapon and then immediately trying to put it into the center of our shoulder. I need to hunch my neck over so much and then my strap is making contact with this and causing me a imperfect sight picture and then my it is currently hitting the strap on my body armor and it's making this a extremely uncomfortable sight picture. So now I'm going to show you guys my solution to it. Instead, if you pull your stock out a little bit, which is a conversation in and of itself. People will argue there's only one stock placement. Don't listen to those people. Those people are idiots. There are benefits to every stock placement on this stock right here. Um, and I instead develop a more heads up shooting position like so. I can see my reticle. My stock is obviously not fully in my shoulder, but I can see my reticle perfectly. My head is at a slight lean but I'm not having any neck strain and I'm not having any strain whatsoever. And right then and there, I perfectly found a shooting position that works for me. Now, imagine this, by the way, if I had it on a lower mount. If I was on a lower mount, I would need to be all the way down here, at which point I am literally getting physical pain inside of my lower neck when I do that. Now, let's talk about the GBBRS one. GBBRS, this one, I don't really have as many issues with other than to say it's an incredible snag hazard to have things here and try to do this stance. It's really fucking hard because if I mess up at all, I'd get stuck on that pouch. Um, but hypothetically, I could bring it up from that ready position into my shoulder, and then I immediately have to hunch over so much. Instead, I much prefer, and let me actually turn on my EOTech here, I much prefer a stance like this, where if I were to be clearing a room, I'd have it over my shoulder, and then I would just kind of drop it into that pocket, right? Drop it into the pocket. Drop it into the pocket. It takes almost no time at all. It's incredibly efficient. It's incredibly fast. And Travis Haley. Travis Haley is a excellent dude that has been there and done that. Um, arguably one of the best sources to learn topics on. And he always preaches smaller faster more efficient work with your body develop these shooting styles and these shooting techniques that are conducive to the human body and you will become a more proficient shooter because you're working with your body instead of fighting against it i really subscribe to that ideology and i don't subscribe to many ideologies a lot of popular youtubers um, preach regarding things like stock placement okay so like I said, the point of this video is just to um, get you guys to think critically about topics like that. Um, don't just listen and take over what your YouTuber friend says. Instead, um, develop your own strategies based off the information provided to you by previous people's experiences. Remember, be that scholar that really takes an active role in researching a topic. Don't just do what that gun is like guy says, because sometimes they may be wrong. Remember guys, for the longest time we did, we did shit wrong. We didn't use slide stops on our handguns in the military and whatnot for decades. Nowadays, if you don't use a slide stop, you're an idiot. Okay. Just um, make your own opinions based off of good, hard, analytical information that you can find yourself in your own personal experiences. Okay, sorry this video ended up being a rant, but that's the point of my YouTube channel. I don't care if the content was informative, it's more so just a platform to me to rant about my shitty opinions. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoy my content. Cry SPC video coming up soon. I'd love to give you guys an intro on this play carrier. Here's a hint, it's absolutely phenomenal. As well as a EOTech EXPS 3-0 overview coming shortly as well. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ready? Yeah.